hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. As always, if you do like my videos and a thumbs up and a subscribe would be really welcome. Um, I'm not a professional YouTuber by any means, but it's great to get the feedback and share the love for these weird guitars. So anyways, today is quite momentous because it's the first time I'm actually going to show you a working Bond electric light guitar that I've reworked. Um, and this is it. Uh, it's not doing very much at the moment because I've actually taken the back off. Because I wanted to start by showing you the, the horrible guts of the guitar. Um, and just to go in order around the parts themselves. So we have here the Arduino, the 2560 I've mentioned before. And I, it's quite an old processor because I started this project about seven or eight years ago. It was a complete failure when I first started because I tried using digital potentiometers and without thinking about it realized, well, that's not going to work on an AC signal that goes below zero. So I'd soldiered on, I tried things like, oh, perhaps if I put the signal sort of halfway up on the voltage, so it was, the, instead of zero, it was all oscillating around 2.5 and it was a mess. So um, it didn't work. I wasted a lot of time on it and I sort of put it to one side and about six months ago I was introduced to Vactrols through a website um, I was just looking at synthesizer kits in fact um, uh, I think I've sort of developed a, a new interest in that area because of the Hello Mum No Computer channel um, which is just wonderful the guy is just so inspiring but anyway I, I found out about these Vactrols and thought hey just the thing I'll get some of those so I bought a couple uh, from a guy in Portugal who seems to sell the genuine parts because there's lots of fakes. And uh, I thought, right, I'll start again. And so what I built in the meantime from the original incarnation, and I'll show you a quick photo actually while I'm talking here, the original incarnation of the guitar, is this new board here. And this is my new Vectoral board. Um, it takes the pickup inputs here, and uh, as you can see, I've added some shielding onto the cables and some capacitors here because I had a problem with RF noise from obviously the digital electronics. And the inputs go in here, and then there's three Vactrols per pickup. So you have two Vactrols which simulate a potentiometer. So you have this signal from the pickup at one end, ground at the other, and then they join the vectors together in the middle to simulate the wiper that we'd get on the you know, on a physical potentiometer. And then the third vectoral is used in conjunction with a typical guitar capacitor to provide the tone control. And it's quite a nice subtle effect I've managed out to get out of it by pure luck rather than design. So three of those for each pickup. So I have nine in total. Um, they're driven by simple MPN transistors. Um, I use that, uh, the MPN transistors. I suppose I could have driven them directly from the Arduino, but I was concerned that I might overload the outputs. Um, on an Arduino 2560, you only have 50, uh, 40 milliamps in total to play with. And I just thought, well, if you know, each of these factorials, according to the data sheets, can take up to 40 milliamps. So I just thought, rather than risk damaging a board, um, I'll risk damaging cheaper transistors. Yeah, and that's, I think, just made sense. In fact, I don't think I needed the transistors, but it just gives me a level of insurance in case I want to play around more and draw more current. I'm not going to do any damage. So, as I said, here is the Arduino. Here is my uh, Vectoral board, the new part. And they're connected here for these digital connections here. And I use the pulse width modulation outputs of the Arduino. Um, again, by sort of pure dumb luck rather than planning, uh, the Arduino 2560 actually has, I think, 12, 12 I think it's 12 or 13 uh, pulse width modulation outputs, and I need nine, so it was great. The other boards like Unos and so on don't have that. Uh, and it's just just easy thing to do. Um, I had the board and uh, was able to reuse it, which is great. Um, this is uh, an old OLED display um, that peeks out through the original hole where there were three uh, seven segment LEDs, and that allows me to do some more interesting things. I could make the cutout a bit bigger, actually. I may look at that in the future, so I can put more on screen in case I want to try and do things like perhaps put a uh, tuner in here or different effects. 
And finally, we have the capacitive touch board here, again, so sort of joined through a cable. Um, there's lots of uh, electrician's tape on here as well to secure things. Uh, one thing I didn't mention actually is this, this um, the body of the bonds are actually made from a carbon composite. So they're actually conductive. You don't need any screening, the whole, the whole of the body is conductive. Um, and so, but what you have to be careful is any sort of stray wires actually touching anything because then they're short out. And I found that uh, here on, certainly on the output jack, um, I had to put some tape over that because I thought everything was working beautifully. Then I put the back on the guitar and uh, it stopped. And I thought, what's going on here? And I eventually realized it was actually just shorting out the signal onto the, uh, the actual conductive body here. So that's the or the um, internals of it. Uh, it's an Arduino, so I've written some Arduino code to run it. Um, for this part, it's mainly the pulse width modulation uh, controls to do that, the, the, the API request to do that. Nothing fancy at all. It's actually quite simple code. The only kind of wrinkle you've got to be aware of is that it's uh, I've actually updated the registers on the t internal timers on the board here so that instead of this being 450 hertz the pulse width uh, frequency it's now more like 32 kilohertz and that just takes any noise out of the audible region um, didn't mean I had to put the RF stuff in but uh, it means that you, know, you don't get sort of choppy sounds going on, on on the controls and on the signal. So there you have it, I'll, uh, I think I'll put the back on now to show you, not to uh, embarrass the poor guitar anymore. Um, actually I had to show you one thing the back. It's a toilet seat. What, what, what were Bond thinking? Anyway, let's uh, put it back together and make some noises. And back in the room. So, here's the guitar. It's all plugged in and working. Um, so, just some sort of quick points around the electrical controls themselves. Um, as I mentioned, the capacitive touch controls. So, I've actually set up these three here to be the actual switches for the different pickups. So uh, at the moment it's on the middle. You can see with uh, this uh, LED here, I can turn on the neck, turn on the bridge, and just play around to my heart's content. Um, I also have a control here that lets me switch automatically through them, uh, just sort of doing different combinations. Back to the uh, neck there. And at the same time, <coughs> I'm not sure if it's visible there, but you can see some text there changing as I switch through them and uh, and also the volume uh, displayed there as well so it allows me so that when we've got all three up there I can turn down the middle volume I can turn it back up again and uh, do the same for the bridge and turn it back up and as I do so you can see little flashy lights uh, on here as well so lots of fun and let's go back to the next pickup. So, of course, you want to hear what it sounds like. Um, it's not set up properly. In fact, it's never been set up as far as I can tell. I think it, this has just been picked up off the factory floor and someone says, oh, I'll, I'll sell it, make some money. Um, so it's pretty horrible to play, to be, to be entirely honest. Um, you've got the fact that the, the, it's not set up, the, the nuts not being cut or anything like that. I've just been focusing on making it uh, make noises and so uh, I'm going to have to teach myself how to set up guitars and, and sort this one out. But in the meantime, here we go, this is the neck pick. So, yeah, pretty acceptable sound. These pickups are actually just um, fairly cheap ones I got off Amazon, the lipstick pickups that I thought looked cool. I should put the original Bonds one back in I suppose, but I don't know, these look cool. It's, it's not a Bond really anymore, it's a, I should call it a Beardo <laughs> instead of a Bond. Anyway, so here we go with the, um, let's go to the actual middle. <laughs> I can turn on the neck again. So I've got the neck and the middle. I can fiddle around with the volumes as well. So let's turn down the volume on the neck. So it's uh, half volume. 
and for good measure that's turned on the bridge as well. And we can turn up the bridge well. And let's turn off the other two if you can't. Now the other thing of course you want to do is uh, change tone. So what I'll show you now is if I turn this around and I press this control which is the mode control you'll see that we're now in a tone and you can see it because it's, uh, well no it's not, hold on, there we go, it's in blue so that indicates that it's now a tone control. So let's go to the, let's try the bridge actually because the bridge is probably the one we might notice a, a tone effect most. So this is no tone change, it's just signal straight through. And let's go down about halfway on the tone. Yep, that's about there. And all the way down on the tone. Quite a subtle uh, effect, but uh, that's how I like it actually. I don't like really gross uh, tone controls because they're not really that usable. And let's wind it all the way back up. Okay. The other thing I've been experimenting with, because I have digital control of volume, is whether I could do a tremolo effect. So let's go there. Okay. And so this is a first attempt at tremolo. I've got more work to do on the user experience and everything on here. I remember I'm just showing percentages of what's going on. Um, so let's actually hear it sounds. It's, it's, you can tell it's, it's sort of tremolo-ish. But it definitely needs more work. One of the, the problems I'm having is that uh, there's certain aspects of the code that can slow things right down. So if you're actually writing any debug information out in the serial port, the performance goes like that. And it's the same actually, unfortunately, if I write anything to the display because it's quite a slow serial connection. If I try updating the screen, it also just goes, oh, I can't do this. Um, so the trick is to Avoid updating anything on the serial connection, and don't, um, which is either these displays or writing anything out to debug on your computer because it really does slow things down. I tend to write code where I can actually turn off all debug. I redefine the, the, the serial print functions to be just nothing. Um, and if anyone's interested in the code, I'm really quite happy to share it. It's nothing particularly fancy. Um, the, the code for the Vactrols. Um, I think as I mentioned earlier is just simple pulse width modulation, so a standard feature of Arduinos. Back off again, back to the bridge. So there you have it. I'm really, really quite pleased with this because uh, you know, few, you know, beginning of this year it was just doing nothing. I, I just didn't know what to do with it. And now I actually have a working guitar. Um, needs more work to set it up. And uh, But it's just opened the doors now. I can start to play around with programming, play around with the tremolo, um, see if I can connect the output into the A to D input of the board without creating noise. Um, and uh, then I could do things, I could have a tuner. I could try and do some volume swells as you play notes, uh, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sort of short journey uh, through this guitar uh, into a working instrument, and I hope it inspires you to actually go and play with some electronics. Um, I, you know, it's 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 not something to be frightened of. It's incredibly rewarding to get boards like Arduinos or Raspberry Pis and actually make things happen as a result of your programming. Um, I don't, you know, I've done this sort of thing for most of my life, writing software, and there's nothing more rewarding when you write some code and then suddenly it works. It's a wonderful moment. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll be back hopefully soon with some more guitars. I haven't bought any new ones, but it's a couple of things I haven't shown you so far. Uh, in fact, there's this one here, the... Uh, this Sir here, this Sir T with the Nashville um, pickups on it. Wonderful guitar, great for the Keith sort of riffage. Um, so perhaps I'll show you that one next. Anyway, bye for now.